Hey, welcome to the broadcast. My name is Jeremy Fine. I'm the pastor here at Accelerate Church, and this is my wife. Hi, I'm Erin, and we are so excited here at Accelerate Church that you have joined and tuned in today. And we invite you to come sometime. Just come visit us. We'd love to have you and see you. And I just want you to know that the Holy Spirit has a word just for you today. You may be going through all kinds of things in life, but if you will tune in to His voice and His word, He has your answer. That's right. If you can't join us in person at 10 a.m. on Sundays at 4400 South Crockett, then you ought to go to our website, AccelerateChurch.cc. We have all our sermons there, and you can watch our services live and be a part of what God is doing here at Accelerate Church. But right now, we're going to get into the word today. Life is all about stewardship. The kingdom of God this life on this side of heaven is all about what kind of steward you are with what God's given you. We get one life, we get one shot, and we've got to make it count. We've got to make it count. Ephesians chapter 5, did I give you time to get there? I was glad for the three of you that rejoiced. Let me, let me go back over this. You know, training is repetition, so you've heard this before. But when I'm speaking or anyone else, when they tell you the scripture to go to, you ought to shout and rejoice every time we go there. You want to give it a try? Yeah. All right, here we go. Let's rewind. Ephesians chapter 5. Yeah. Praise God. That's what I like. Show the Lord you're excited about his word. Amen. Amen. Say, thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. Ephesians chapter 5. I, I read a lot in the New Testament. I love the Old Testament too. But I do a lot of study in the New Testament. Usually uh, in the new year, I make it a New Year's resolution to try to listen to the New Testament every month. I haven't done too good this year. But I tell you what, I love listening to the New Testament because the New Testament's where you see the story of Jesus, the new covenant. Covenant's another name for testament. And you see he shed his blood and that we're New Testament Christians. And where you find out where everything makes sense and you connect all the dots is in the Pauline epistles. God used Paul to pen, he was basically his secretary, inspired by the Holy Spirit, to talk to us and what we have in Christ, to talk to Christians about who we are so that our eyes can be open to what we have. It's all revealed in the Pauline epistles. And so I encourage you to spend a lot of time there. I do that. And as I was reading some familiar verses, hopefully they're familiar to you, something popped off the page and I said, oh, thank you, Lord. And I just couldn't shake it. It's time to preach it. So praise God. Ephesians chapter five and verse 14. Therefore, the Lord says, that's the he here, awake you who are asleep. I thought, well, this is a good one for me to preach on Sunday morning after Thanksgiving, after eating a lot of turkey, because you might be tempted to doze off already, but I've got a word for you. Wake up! That's what, that's what the Lord said. Say, how are you going to receive from God if you're asleep? you got to wake up. Look at your neighbor and say, wake up. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Praise the Lord. This tells us something. Revelation knowledge will come to those who are awake. And those who are asleep spiritually are going to miss out on the things of the kingdom of God. I can tell you that. I, every once in a while, if you've been here for a few months, every once in a while you'll hear me, I'll say, wake up! And I'll just scream it like a wild man. And one day someone said, why do you always yell wake up at us like that? I said, uh, the Lord showed me that when I do that, somebody's waking up. I don't know if it's someone here. I don't know if it's someone streaming. I don't know where it is. But when I say that by the Spirit of God, I believe someone's waking up from the slumber that this world's put on them. It's like the things of this world. It's almost like just putting someone to sleep. I see like a hypnosis or something. Just All of a sudden, they're just going to sleep. You get dull spiritually just by living in this world and doing nothing. You grow dull. So the Lord's saying, wake up. Rise from the dead. Christ will give you light. Praise God, we need some light. Verse 15, see then that you walk circumspectly. I like that word a lot. We're going to talk about it here for just a minute. But look at this. Not as fools, but as wise. This, this tells us something if we really take our time to meditate on a verse. And you ought to do this, by the way. Don't just blaze through the verses. You ought to sit here and meditate on word by word many times what this means. We're going to break this down a little bit, but I want to point this out. You're either living as a fool or you're living as a wise person. 
There's really no in between. You're either living wise or you're living like a fool. <laughs> well, which one is it? Well, this tells us if you're living circumspectly, you're not living like a fool. See, this tells me fools don't care about a lot of things. I'm not talking about taking the cares of life. The Bible teaches us to cast our cares. I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about they don't care about being exact. They don't care about being careful, being diligent. They don't, they don't care about being deliberate, about being watchful. That's what it means to be circumspect. Let me say it again. You need to catch this. Circumspectly means, in the Greek, if you look it up, exactly. That's what it means. So he's telling us, see then that you walk exactly. It also means diligently. So I'm going to say it that way. See then that you walk diligently. It also means careful to heed. So see then that you walk where you're careful to heed what the Lord is saying. See then that you walk deliberately. That's good. I like that. See then that you walk watchfully. So you're not cavalier in your approach. Only a fool in this end time hour would claim to be a Christian and just walk haphazardly. Oh, well, it don't really matter. No, 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 no. The Bible tells you to walk exactly. How are you going to know how to walk exactly, how to walk diligently, you know, if you don't even have any intake of the word of God? How would you understand what that even means? Walk exactly. You, some people... They're really paying attention to sports. That's always been an, uh, something I could give myself over to, and I do enjoy watching football. Watch quite a bit of football over this past week, actually. So I know the Cowboys won. I didn't watch the whole game because it was so boring. This is the kind I like, just blowouts, right? But if you didn't watch that, then when it comes to that, you weren't diligent, you didn't know. So we understand this, and I've used this a lot of times for examples. If you don't know something, you're ignorant. The devil always will pick on those that are without knowledge, that are ignorant. We just spent a series talking about this, but the Bible tells you and I to walk a different way. Not as a fool, but as a wise person. Verse 16 says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Uh, this was like this was written yesterday. That's how alive the Word of God is. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. In other words, stop wasting time. I don't know about you, but when I read these, uh, I, I sent some urgency in these verses. And that's where I come up with this, make it count. I, I see that the Holy Spirit's trying to get across to people that are blood-bought, Holy Ghost-filled. In the church, the church at Ephesus, many people thought was a a prime church, a, a church that was held up as an example church of that's what you want to be like. And yet Paul's writing and he says, there's got to be an urgency. You got to make this count. You got to make your life count for something. The wise way to live is circumspectly. The foolish way is to be lazy, negligent, reckless. That's the opposite of circumspect. You don't want to be reckless in your Christian walk. You don't want to be negligent. The Bible talks a lot about that. We'll cover that in this series. But I was looking at these scriptures in a bunch of different translations. I have a lot of translations of the Bible. You can't count on a lot of them just to let you know. But every once in a while I come across one and it hits me and I think, I really like the way that's worded. Look at Ephesians 5, 16. This is out of the Passion Translation, which you can't count on for a lot to be honest with you. But I like this one. Look at it. Ephesians 5, 16. It says, take full advantage of every day. Man, I like that. Take advantage of every day. Did you know that every day is a gift from God in your life? Every day that you are alive is a gift from God Almighty. And this says take advantage of every day as you spend your life for His purposes. You see why I put that on the screen now, don't you? That's a good one. Take full advantage of every day as you spend your life for his purposes. There is no other fulfillment in life to spend your life on other than the purpose that God has put you here. Hey, Pastor Jeremy here from Accelerate Church. And his wife, Erin. And we want to invite you this Christmas season to Accelerate Church. If you're in need of peace, joy, love, hope, 
wisdom. These are all gifts Jesus gives. And come to church. It's found in His Word. And that's right. Every Sunday, 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We'd love to see you soon. And we want to wish you a, a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Let me just say this to you. You don't determine your purpose. You discover your purpose. You don't, you don't get to determine why you exist and what you're going to do. Uh, there's a side to that that you do. I may talk about that more. But God's the one that calls you by his name. God is the one that was with you in your mother's womb. God is the one that puts the call of God on your life. The purpose that he's given you, right? So your job is to walk with God, and as you walk with God and have a real life relationship with God, what happens is He reveals your purpose. You discover it along life's journey. You don't determine what it is. Trust me, if I determined, I was talking to my brother-in-law the other night, we went and watched part of a high school game, and it was cold. Man, it was cold. And I said, I got to get out of here early. I can't watch this whole thing. I'm, I can't feel my feet anymore. I'm out of here. Man, I was suited up like I was going skiing in the Alps or something, and I was still cold here in Amarillo, well, in Canyon. We were just watching that, and I felt, I always, when I watch high school football, it takes me back to a movie I saw where there was an uncle that talked about throwing the football over the mountains, and I, I channeled my inner Uncle Rico <laughs> on that moment when I say, man, I tell you what, I, and Kagan was the one that got to hear that the other night. I said, man, when I was in high school, I got to throw the ball so far, oh, man. And you know what he said? Cool. <laughs> he was like shaking. It's so cold. I'm sure he was real impressed that I used to could throw the football. You know, that didn't, that didn't amount to much. That wasn't my purpose. But well, when I was 14, 15, 16 years old, even younger than that, my dream was to play tackle football. That was my dream. That was, I mean, I just loved football. That's what I talked about. But you know, God, he didn't put that purpose in my life. See, if I was to determine it, that would be the route that I took back then. I'm talking about back then. Not now. Now, see, now I'm already at the age I'm like, thank God I don't walk around with a limp. I don't have any injuries. My dream, see, was not in the blessing. My dream was just, well, play football. If you're in Texas, you know, and you're in a small town and you're raised one block from the football field, that's all you think about. That's how I was. But did you know that wasn't God's purpose? I had to discover it. I actually, I discovered it way back there because other people could recognize it in me. Wow. And that's, that's going to help you. You need to understand this. I don't know who I'm talking to, but if you're, if you're like, I don't know what my purpose is, God will reveal it. If you'll get planted where he's called you to get planted and you get around the people God's called you to get around, what's going to happen? Your gift's going to make room for you. Yeah, it's going to be discovered. That was worth coming to hear. We got to take advantage of every day. This is how you make it count. So I was thinking of three things, three ways to take full advantage of every day. Number one, I want you to look at this. Keep an eternal perspective. I want to talk about this for a minute. My life completely changed when I listened to an audio drama called Affabel. If you've been here before, you've heard this. But I was raised a preacher's kid in church my whole life. And then once I was an adult and got married, my lovely bride, we, from day one, we've been planted in church. We were always about church. We're in church. But that didn't mean that I was pursuing what God had called me to do. Are you listening? Because yeah. then I grew up and there were other things that were interesting. I knew tackle football, that dream got crushed way back in the day. So, you know, now it's like, well, what else am I here for, Right. Somebody asked me this when I went to college at Emerald College. They said, they said, what is it you're going to do? I said, well, I want to be in radio in Dallas, Fort Worth. I thought for some reason that sounded so big and huge and then it's nothing. Now I'm preaching on television in Dallas, Fort Worth, and it's just another day, right? See what I'm talking about? So it's kind of like, you know, what I had thought, oh, this is huge. Well, that's, that wasn't my purpose. I'm just trying to throw something out there, right? And so, you know, sometimes it takes a while to get around to what you think your purpose is. And so I'll never forget when I listened to Affabel because it was an audio drama of people that stood before God and gave an account. And I had been faithful in every church I've ever been in. Before this church, this Counting Kingdom Keys Church, you know, that was, that's the originating name of this church was Kingdom Keys Church. So if you take this church, 
There's this one and three others I've been involved in my entire life. Uh, first 17 years of my life, preacher's kid. In five years, I served at one church. In five years, I served at another church. And then we started Kingdom, Kingdom Well. We were in Oklahoma City, so that's actually one more church right there. So look at that. See, if I think about it, I've been involved with more than I realize. But here's what I want you to understand. When I got an eternal perspective on things, it changed everything. Amen. The reason I repented and said to my wife in my home, I repent. She said, why? I repented and said, I'm living a different way. Is I wasn't pursuing God's call. I wasn't following God's purpose. But when I got that eternal perspective, and I want you to catch this this morning. When you get an eternal perspective, it'll make you evaluate the things you're doing. Is what you're doing of eternal significance? Is what you're spending your days doing, you're spending your days, is that of eternal consequences? You see, I say something at every memorial service that I've ever officiated, which is quite a few now. You only get one life. I say that part. I already said that. But here's the thing. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. When I realize God's the one that called me by his name. And I, he's the one that gives me the purpose. And I'm not pursuing that. I had to repent. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm going to follow you. And I, I took it off from the internal perspective. And did you know that's what's kept me as pastoring here, and I won't be talked out of this post by any naysayer or any storm or whatever. Why? Because all this pales in comparison to the eternal perspective. And I want you to think of this. Anything you go through in life is small potatoes compared to eternity. The Bible says this, that life is like a vapor. Vapor of smoke, it's here and then it's gone. It's true. You can live to be 100 and that's still going to be true compared to eternity because eternity is outside of time. And listen, we are living for a day where we see the king who lives eternal. And on that day, you're going to hope that you made this life count. This is number one. How, how, do, I, how do I take full advantage of my days? One, keep an eternal perspective. Number two, Make the word your standard. Oh, catch this today. You got to make the word of God your standard. When anything else is your standard, get ready for confusion. When anything else is your standard, get ready to just not know a whole lot of things that you should know. The word decides everything for you. There's a scripture in my spirit rumbling around and it says everything that you need for life and godliness is in the word. Everything that you need in life, everything that you need to live godly is found in the word. This right here will change everything about your life. It will make it count when you make the word your standard. You can stay up to date with everything happening at Accelerate Church by downloading our app. Add events directly to your calendar, receive notifications when services are going live, hear previous sermons preached by Pastor Jeremy, and you can even give right there from your mobile device. The Accelerate Church app has everything you need right there in the palm of your hand. Head over to your app store today and type in Accelerate Church Amarillo to download to your mobile device. If you obey the Word of God, the Word of God is going to make you look smarter than you really are. Even if you've got 10 degrees from college, I can tell you right now that the Word of God will make you look wiser than any degree ever would. I applaud you for that, but I'm here to let you know something. It's the Word that gives you wisdom. It's the Word of God that gives you protection. It's the Word of God that is your offensive weapon, the sword of the Spirit. I said it's the Word of God. Somebody say the Word of God. Say it with me. Thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. You got to make it your standard. You got to make it your standard. Why do you believe certain things are okay? Where's that at in scripture? See, people, they point to a lot of things. Well, I believe it because there's all these people I was raised around, or there's all these Christians, or there's all these even pastors that believe this certain way. Did you know, if you don't know the Bible for yourself, you're going to be taken and deceived. And so you've got to make the word your standard. The word is your standard. Not what you've seen in other people. 
The word is your standard. The word is your standard. Say it. The word of the living God is my standard. See, that's what we decided when the doctor said, don't get your hopes up. I don't, I don't see any way you're going to have babies. Well, the word became our standard. The word has to become your standard. And the word works for everyone that works the word. I hope you catch this today. Number three, if you want to take full advantage of the days you have on earth and make it count, never give up. Never quit. The enemy's entire plan hinges upon this right here, that you're going to quit. He believes there'll be enough pressure put on you to quit, to pull the plug. And I want you to think about this. As long as you stay plugged in where God called you to stay plugged in, number one is Jesus. Number two is the Holy Spirit. Number three is the local church where he has called you. If you'll say, I'm staying plugged in, did you know your whole life will be filled up with blessing? And you'll walk over the top of the curse. The plan of the enemy will fall to nothing. But if he can get you to unplug, I give up. Okay. That's sad. And I'm just going to tell you this. The temptation to give up will come. It comes for everyone. Man, I thought this, but I give up. Now see, that means you had your plug in the wrong spot. Number one, it's got to be into Jesus. Number two, the Holy Spirit. So, so let, let's talk about this. Jesus was the word made flesh. So how much time do you spend in the word every day? Number two, see the Holy Spirit. So how much time do you spend praying in the Holy Ghost every day? You know what people say? Well, I'm busy. Okay. So you just unplug. I'm not teaching partnership class, but I got to point something out here. If I went and bought the newest, greatest technology uh, refrigerator that did whatever I wanted to do, but I didn't plug it in. I don't get its usefulness. It just sits there and take up space. And I do teach this in partnership, but you got to catch this because a lot of Christians, they come on Sunday and they just take up space. They don't really plug in. If you're plugged into Jesus, that means you're plugged into his word. If you're in his word every day and you come to a church like this, then that's why it explains people standing up shouting all the time. Well, oh, there's a light. I just don't get that. I just don't. Oh, yeah, but you ain't plugged in. And I can tell you this. If you, if you add to the word of God intake every day into your life, praying in the Holy Ghost every day, now you're going to be double plugged in. Are you hearing me? Yeah. And then you get plugged into a local church. Man, look out. That is a three-quarter strand that's not easily broken. And the enemy fears the Christian that does that. Yeah. Are you listening today? Well, pastor, what in the world are you talking about? I'm talking to you about making it count. How do you make it count? You've got to keep an eternal perspective. You've got to make the word your standard. You've got to never give up or never quit. I'm going to talk more about those three points as we go in this series. But I want to talk about the Christmas story. And let me explain why I thought of the Christmas story with this. Because when I think of Jesus coming... I started meditating on all that went into this. And I thought, wait a minute. The Lord, he's the one that set the standard by sending Jesus. Uh, he really made it count. He sent his son. You ever heard of John 3, 16? How many have ever heard of that? For God so loved the world that he gave his what? Wow. Is that making it count or what? He so loved the world that he decided to send his only begotten son. He did not send an angel for us. Are you listening to me? He sent his son. He sent his son. Why? Because he loved us. What did he do? He set the standard then. What? I'm going to make this count. We celebrate this time of the year that the king is here. Emmanuel, God with us, was born. The reason for the decorations is because, well, it's fun to celebrate our king being born. And we celebrate this, and when you stop and think about it, Jesus didn't halfway come. So why would we halfway live for him? Why would we take this life and not make it count? 
Why would we think that half-heartedness is going to fly in the kingdom of God? You know, half-hearted Christianity doesn't make it to heaven. Half-heartedness doesn't make it to heaven. Well, God only understands. He loves me. He loves, he loves you, but, I mean, you don't even give him any time. All these other things fighting for your attention. And never before have we ever, in the history of humans, had so much availability just at the touch of a button. I was listening to Kingdom Keys. Uh, I was running an errand and, for Aaron, and, <laughs> and I, I had the radio on. And they were talking about the brain activity. This was on Focus on the Family. They were talking about the brain activity when you control the screen. And this person that was on, I didn't catch their name because, again, it was just while I was running an errand. I heard this part of it. They said, you know, we used to blast watching television, but watching television didn't have the same um, effect on your brain as you controlling the screen. When you control the screen, your brain's super excited and active, like, like it, and it stimulates you. And so now we've gotten to a place where so many people have their own devices that to set that down for even five minutes bores them. Folks, we are, we got a problem and it's like it's boiling under the surface because if some of you will check, you spend seven, eight, nine hours a day on a device and I'll tell you this, there's, there's no sustaining power in that device unless you have the word of God coming through it. Now I did something this morning cause I, I thought, you know, I woke up at like five o'clock and I had a believer on my mind that's in a big battle right now. And I sent him several scriptures said, thinking of you today, love you. And I, I laid there and I thought, I'm going to get up and pray in the Holy ghost. And I thought, no, you know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm going to do? I just got through with holidays. We had a great time. We had a wonderful time. I'm going to sit here and make myself listen to the word for an hour. Why? Because the word of God has a cleansing effect upon you. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to stand up today in the holy desk and I'm going to preach a word from God. And I know God's anointed me to do it. And I'm fully confident that the word's going to come forth. But I've got to get this word in me apart from that. Just to sit here and just to sit here and wash in that word. And I tell you what, it filled my spirit up so much. I, I literally, now I was laid out on the couch. I was laid there on the couch. But I had the word right there. See, you can use your device for the word. So I'm not just like, blow your device up, have nothing. No, use it, leverage it to get the word in you. Amen. Because it's the word of God and the spirit of God in you that's going to give you the power to never quit. Pastor Jeremy here. That's all the time we have today. So I hate to interrupt myself preaching there, but we had a good time today. Yes, we did. And we invite <laughs> you to come in person. Come see us. Stop by and say, hey, Pastor Jeremy. Hey, Miss Erin. I saw you on TV because we would love to meet you Absolutely. and shake your hand. Absolutely. And be sure and tune in again next time on the same station, same time for the Accelerate Church television broadcast.